Perineal AKI is when there is not enough blood reaching the kidneys. For example, in situations like hypovolemia, which means low blood volume. And in hemorrhage, when there is loss of blood and not enough blood left for kidney perfusion. Also in the case of heart failure, when there is a low cardiac output, that means less blood is being pumped out of the heart. So there is still less blood being circulated and therefore your kidney will be hypoperfused, less perfused in these cases. So the important thing to know here is when your cardiac output decreases and the effective circulating volume of blood decreases, it's a cause for prerenal AKI. Okay, so now we know in prerenal AKI, the kidney is hypoperfused, which means it receives less fluid. If it receives less fluid, it doesn't filter as much fluid. So this will cause your GFR or the glomerular filtration rate to go down or to decrease because the filtering ability of the kidney is impaired now. We know creatinine is a freely filtered molecule. It freely filters from the glomerulus into the bowmans and it passes all along with urine. So if the GFR is decreased, the creatinine filtration will also decrease. And this will cause creatinine to accumulate in our blood serum and increase the blood serum creatinine levels. Another thing that happens in this low perfusion state is the activation of the RAS process or the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. A hormone called renin in the kidney will carry out the conversion of angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. This angiotensin 1 will further be converted to angiotensin 2. This angiotensin 2 is very important as it stimulates the secretion of a hormone called aldosterone from the adrenal glands. And this aldosterone will ultimately increase the sodium reabsorption in the nephron. Which means aldosterone will try to conserve sodium. So when you try to conserve sodium, water will always follow because water follows the basic rules of osmolarity. And also because urea is also integral to this counter current exchange system, it will also be reabsorbed back into the blood. So ultimately we have sodium, water and urea being reabsorbed back into the blood. So the serum creatinine, sodium, water and urea levels will increase in this setting. This will result in the blood urea nitrogen to serum creatinine ratio to increase drastically and the ratio will be more than 20. Another thing clinicians use to assess prerenal AKI is the fractional excretion of sodium or FENA. A higher FENA value would mean that a lot of sodium is being excreted while a low FENA value would mean that we are conserving a lot of sodium. So in this case as a lot of sodium is being reabsorbed back into the blood, our FENA value will be less than 1%. And water is being conserved as well, so our urine will also be very concentrated. So our urine osmolality will be definitely greater than 500 milliosmols. So to sum up about prerenal AKI, we know when the renal blood flow decreases, more urea, sodium and water will be reabsorbed back into the blood and the urine osmolality will be definitely greater than 500 milliosmols and the urine sodium concentration will be less than 20 and the FENA or the fractional excretion of sodium will be less than 1% because we are absorbing more sodium and a very little is being excreted and the serum BUN to creatinine ratio will be greater than 20.